Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment on The Breakfast, where we take a look at the national dailies and see what's making headlines in Nigeria. I will begin this morning with The Punch newspaper, and the headline reads, India's deadly COVID-19 variant. Federal government expert panel meets today, plans additional measures. And uh, to Mori here, uh, scrutinize airlines conveying passengers from India. Uh, coronavirus testing still low, residents' doctors express concern. FG spends 568.5 billion naira annually on par tariff shortfalls, and that's according to the World Bank. Um, outrage greets abduction of Christian worshippers in Kaduna. 12 power plants suffer gas shortage as 1,610 uh, megawatts of electricity idle. And we have an analysis here saying Pantami should just go now. Hmm. And below the headline here on the Punch newspaper, we see a picture of, uh, we see, it looks like a gridlock, and the story reads, stranded commuters lament as fallen tanker causes gridlock on Lagos Ivan Expressway. Fallen tanker causes gridlock. Uh, Southeast governors direct AGs to partner panel on a Bubiagu law. NDLEA seizes 10 billion naira heroin in Lagos. Kano arrests six. 11 killed as speeding bus crashes into truck in Kwara. A counter shot by Robert dies following rejection by Lagos hospitals. Three policemen arrested for extorting last student of 153,000 naira in Ogun State. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, Community deserted as bandits abduct another 35 residents in Niger State. All right, now to the nation. Uh, newspapers this morning. See what we can also squeeze in uh, for you. Uh, the big one there says uh, soldiers and policemen killed in attacks on checkpoints. Also on the nation this morning. Uh, no COVID-19 deaths in 12 days, says the NCDC. And Undume says put suspected Boko Haram financiers on open trial. And U.S. to raise Africa's growth finance to $6 billion. This morning also security. Southeast governors and leaders insist on Ibu Beagu. And we can also find here nine wedding guests die in accident. And Nigeria accounts for 23% global malaria deaths. Also Lagos to a shot or jota on the pass. Uh, I think those are the big and uh, most relevant ones. Okay, it also says that three customs men die. Bandits killed doctor in attack on Kaduna Church. Boko Haram hits Burno Town. Sect beheads teacher preaches in uh, uh, Gay Dam. All right, let's also move to the Daily Independent next and uh, see what stories that we can find. All right, on the Daily Independent, Nigeria loses 23.5 billion naira yearly to offshore aircraft maintenance. FG facility yet to take off six years after promise. States to unlock fresh options over declining federal allocation. Attack on Uzodima's home threat to Nigeria's existence, and that's according to the governors. Several security personnel killed as gunmen attack reverse checkpoints. Bandits attack Kaduna Church, kill doctor, abduct worshippers. And below the headline, Ebu Beagu will work with police, other security agencies, that's according to the Southeast governors. Two more stories here on Daily Independence. Fayoshe here says, Buhari's government now employer, defender of terrorists. And lastly, lawyers defer over Lagos taking over corruption cases from EFCC and ICPC. All right, I think we can uh, get to the This Day newspapers and uh, share a few, a few others. Uh, this Day this morning says, uh, Southeast leaders push for legal backing for Ibu Beagu. Governors, speakers disagree on fixed monthly payment to state legislatures. Also, judicial and legislative workers' strike continues. Federal government holds talks with striking workers today. We can also find on the, this day, uh, this morning, federal government rejects World Bank's report on Nigeria's power sector. Uh, I think uh, we might just uh, take a break there. Those are the big ones that we have this morning. Good morning once again, uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Thank you for Good morning, joining my us. brother. All right, uh, you can go ahead. I'm not sure which story you would like to kick off from. Well, there are um, so many interesting stories in there, even though they are, most of the stories are not um, palatable. 
uh, to the ear to the extent that um, most of them are also or are dealing with the bloodletting, spilling of innocent people's blood all over the country. The first I would like to address is that um, that uh, talks about uh, states now trying to find uh, alternative means of generating revenue so as to be able to meet their obligation uh, to the Nigerian people. The truth of the matter is that such things are not done overnight. We have always talked about um, uh, diversification of the nation's economy since time immemorial. But we have really never had the courage and then the necessary wear without to embark on that path because oil continue to flow from the Niger Delta. But truth of the matter is uh, there are so many alternatives that we could really uh, tap into. But the tragedy, in my humble opinion, is that um, the Nigerian ruling elite appears to me to be very lazy, to be very indolent, not to be capable of doing very thorough thinking that is likely to lead to the ability of the state to generate revenue from other sources other than one. But I will give you two examples. Look at entertainment and sports, for example. Look at the huge amount of revenue that that brings to Britain, football, for example, on a weekly basis. Look at what the uh, music brings to Jamaica. Look at what uh, athletics, uh, Usain Bolt and the rest of them, bring to Jamaica. If since they return to this civil rule, we had embarked on investing in sports alone, you are now who realize that would have been a very, very good source of uh, revenue. At the time, a musical group like uh, ABBA in Sweden were bringing very good revenue to Sweden. Jamaica up to today, reggae still brings a lot of um, uh, revenue to Jamaica. You also recollect the last time that uh, Dr. Okonjo Iwela visited Buhari in Nigeria, he mentioned the issue of Grammy that is won by Bonaboy. And he pointedly told the president that, Mr. President, with this Grammy that this boy has won, you have a product in your hand to market. Mm. But surprisingly to me, I never saw any positive response from Mr. President. Furthermore, look at tourism. People go to Dubai, ordinary desert, that doesn't have any serious a landscape that one can say is fascinating that you want to visit. But Nigerians and so many other citizens from other parts of the world are trooping to, to Dubai for tourism and to buy houses. If we provide security in this country, if we are able to get our hearts right, places like Jaws, places like Oputukatu Ranch, places like Abuja, we in places like Lagos, we be very, very good and attractive places where tourism we want to visit. When you enter Lagos by air, when you come into Lagos by air, and you look at all those banana islands and Victoria Island and all that, what comes to your mind is, wow, what kind of a scenic landscape is this? Mm. But truth of the matter is, uh, our highlights are not wired or geared towards um, diversifying the Nigerian, uh, Nigeria's economy. Okay. Right. To come um, complacent. All right. uh, it's just making money from oil. Yeah, to Nicola Wale, let, let's, um, let's move into um, yeah. um, the issue of security now. Uh, Undume is in the news this morning on The Nation saying, uh, put suspected Boko Haram financiers on open trial. If you remember, the government has, you know, a few times made mention that they are aware of those people who are uh, funding and financing Boko Haram and they would release the names pretty soon. They've threatened a few times. Um, but, you know, that still has not happened. Um, so what do you think, you know, we might be or might be holding back the Nigerian government from, well, from doing that? Under the Nigerian constitution, 
all trials are supposed to be open to the public. If we have visited any of our courts, you will find out that when the courts are sitting, whether at the magistrate court level, whether at the high court level, whether at the court of appeal level, or whether at the Supreme Court level, they don't shut their doors. And you journalists are always allowed to cover court proceedings. So anybody making noise or agitating or saying uh, trials of uh, Boko Haram financiers should be made open, in my humble opinion, is not saying anything new. Uh, but but do you do you think do you think the Nigerian government truly is aware of those who uh, are financing insurgency in Nigeria? I don't think so, and even if they are aware. I'm not too sure they will have the balls to really be able to take on such people. Truth of the matter is, most of the people who are in sensitive places, who are the M of affairs of this country, are sympathizers of the Boko Haram insurgency because most of them are Muslims. And when you look at uh, both the Quran and the Hadith, it encourages an average Muslim to support the jihad, such as the one that the Boko Harams are doing. You can support it that are fighting, participating physically in the fighting, or providing the necessary wherewithal and resources for those who are actually engaged in the fighting. It is for that reason you find out when in the past a Boko Haram commander has been arrested and handed over to a commissioner of police, he released him. Even Ali Nduma himself, if you go back to history, you will remember there was a time it was alleged that he was asking direct uh, correspondence with the Boko Haram commander, that he was exchanging text messages with them, and he was taken to court, he was prosecuted in an Abuja, in the federal High court in Abuja. He escaped justice because somebody somewhere went and tampered with court record. It's not as if he got off the hook based on the merit of his uh, case, unfortunately too, the same man who had in the past two trials for being a sympathizer and a correspondent with both the Boko Haram uh, uh, jihadist, is now the chairman of the Senate Committee on the Army, sitting on the sensitive committee mm. of the Army, in which we will have, we have the opportunity to have privileged information with regards to whatever the armies are doing with regard to whatever weapons they have in their arsenal, with, with regard to the ammunition that they are purchasing. You also recollect, there was a time a Boko Haram commander was arrested in the Poronu governor's lodge in Abuja. Nobody has given the Nigerian people an explanation up to the day that a Boko Haram commander find his way into the governor's lodge, the Poronu state governor's lodge in uh, Abuja. So, I'm not too sure that these people will have the balls or the quality or the political will to really do the necessary. Right. And the filler to that is that uh, you remember when this issue of Boko Haram financial force came up, the attorney general of the federation who should be eager to prosecute them. The first statement he made is that uh, they will want to investigate force and ascertain that the people who tried them, I think in Dubai, gave them a fair trial. He didn't tell the Nigerian people that he will be asking for the record of proceeding and the treatment of investigation that was carried out by the police in those places to ascertain the culpability of these people and if they are ever deported to Nigeria or their supporters in Nigeria, or equally prosecute them in Nigeria. So I'm not too sure we are likely to get anything tangible from that direction. All right. Okay, so Mr. Kolawale is still talking about security. Um, I want your comments on the recent situation we've been seeing where it seems the terrorists are now taking the fight, you know, to security officials. We saw what happened in uh, River State where soldiers, the story here is on the Nation newspaper, you know, soldiers and policemen were killed in attacks on checkpoints. And over the weekend in uh, Bonu State, we saw a situation where, you know, Boko Haram, you know, attacked a military base. 
and killed. Uh, some news sites are saying 13, others are saying 30 people. We have no idea the exact number, but we know for sure mm. that at least an army commander has been killed. What are your comments on that, Mr. Kolaoli? Hey, honestly speaking, when any Nigerian is killed, whether it be a soldier or a civilian, it diminishes all of us. No human being deserves to lose his life unjustly without maybe a pronouncement or a decision of a court of law. Because it is only the court of law that can deny a man or say a man should be executed for whatever crime he has committed, if that is what the law prescribes as punishment. So when individuals take laws into their hands, because of this arrogance of truth, because of the arrogance of truth that they think it is only their own doctrine and belief that is the truth and nobody else uh, holds any access to truth. Then it is not right. But again, you want to ask yourself, are uh, our security men themselves not making themselves vulnerable for these kind of attacks that we continue to see? When in the past, the army said they were going to be establishing super camps in which they would have um, a mass of crew in specific locations to be able to tackle Boko Haram. I was one of the few Nigerians who said, look, don't establish a super camp. A super camp is a sleeping tent. It makes you vulnerable to be picked up by the Boko Haram or your enemies. Gorilla warfare that we're engaging now the war of attrition that we're engaging now is a man hunting man game. In fact, you shouldn't have any soldier more than 10 five in any particular location at a time. And they should constantly be moving, looking for the Boko Haram to pick them out, just like the Boko Haram are equally looking for them to pick them out. For here and below, you find out our two were amassed themselves in a particular location. And those people will do a reconnaissance and survey on them, know where they are. And when they least expected, those people lay ambush on them and sop on them and begin to kill them. Furthermore, you also find out that there's a lot of indiscipline in the Nigerian army. A lot of indiscipline in the Nigerian army. And until that discipline is caught, we are never likely to have a fighting machine in our troops. What do I mean by indiscipline? We have seen instances in the past in which soldiers deployed to the battlefield will run away. We have seen instances in the past in which soldiers will abandon their weapons. So well, they um, Mr. Soldiers. Kolawale. Yes, please. Well, I, I don't know if you call that indiscipline or just, um, you know, trying to save their own lives. You know, if, if they've also complained of being poorly equipped. And so yes, it, it's, it, it's, it sounds more like suicide if you're poorly equipped is, and going to fight see, um, an enemy that is more equipped than you are. The truth of the matter is this. War is a very, very dirty game. Nobody wants to die. But somehow, if one has accepted to be a soldier, you will realize that the possibility of dying as a soldier is very, very high. So when you are given a responsibility, you just must be ready to do it. Yeah, Fight to the last drop of your blood. Yeah, but and at, at, at the same, same time, you know, it's still... I mean, we heard reports, you know, for example, yesterday of, you know, of an army base in Bernosa that was attacked. Um, reports say almost 30 soldiers were killed, including their commander. I'm sure that there were more than 30 in that camp, and a lot of them also realized that, you know, staying back instead of fleeing, you know, would, you know, would mean complete suicide. And so they, they must have fled to save their lives. If you're poorly equipped, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense to... You know, because you're a soldier, you put yourself in, in uh, harm's way and, and end your life simply because, you know, you've, you've uh, took, uh, taken an oath as a soldier. But I, 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 let's, I let's move uh, uh, to talk I about, still talking insecurity now, the Ibu Beagu. It made the news uh, in most of the papers this morning. Southeast I governors are still very, very um, 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 ready to go ahead with the Ibu Beagu security uh, setup. Do you, you yes. know, what, what are your thoughts on that? And do you think that will be a success? Anyway, I agree with you uh, that it is not impossible. Even as sophisticated as the American army is, when they went into Afghanistan, 
they lost men in there. They are sometimes ambushed by the Taliban and some of their personnel killed. Most of some of their most fortified army barracks were attacked. And then uh, the, the, the American soldiers had their casualties. But what I'm saying is that when you are in the camp, when your troop is massed somewhere else, and you know the kind of enemies that you are dealing with, then you cannot afford, you cannot afford not to have a very strong reconnaissance operations around you 24-7. Most times you'll find that some of these soldiers or policemen, they're in one particular location and they are chatting. They are eating granite. Well, they are making telephone calls. Yeah, I, 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 when, I, I, I want us to, um, you, know, you know, because, because of, you know, I, I want us to, you know, leave um, the conversation with a lot of respect for you know, Nigerian soldiers because of those of who have course, sacrificed their I lives. I respect them. Um, I respect them. You know, in, in the course of their of uh, duty, uh, those who have been killed them. in action and all of that. If they want to eat granite, let them eat granite. Um, mm. Mr. Kolawole, uh, quickly yes. on Ebubeagu, just before we, we go, we are, we're out of time. You know, we have talked about this Ebubeagu some time ago in your program. And I said there is likely to be clashes between the Eastern Nigerian Security Network and then Ebubeagu. The feelers we are getting from the East today, the utterances from the governors and from uh, the IPOP people is tending towards that direction. That none of these two security outfits is ready to yield the ground for the other so that we can have a peace in the Southeast. So the governors will have to find a way to create a middle ground for these two groups to be able to work together. If it is basically to secure the Southeast from bandits, kidnappers, armed robbers, and all other nefarious elements who want to make life difficult um, for our people. It shouldn't be a power tussle between the governors and NIPO, between ESM and Nebubiago. But another dimension we should look at it is uh, do these states really ever have the way with all? Are they even serious with the Bubiagu that they are talking about? Look at the Amateku in the Southwest. That program is not flying. That is the truth of the matter. People are still being kidnapped in Nondo, in Nogu, in Noyo, and uh, the Kitty State on a daily basis, despite the establishment of, um, of uh, the Amateku uh, uh, troop that we have in there. So, uh, furthermore, I'm still sorry to say the attitude of the police to some of these things is also not encouraging. Intelligence guard is very key to unraveling some of these tragedies that we are continuing to see all over the place. All right. If you leave yourself at a particular spot, uh, like a lame dog, and people come to pick you up, it's not which you, 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 you will have yourself to blame. All right, thank I you don't very think much. we are investing enough in, in intelligence uh, garden to be able to unravel some of these um, things. Furthermore, look at the attack on the schools. I have said this time it has number. By now, there is no reason why any of our children in any of the schools should lose their life to any bandits or be uh, subjected to any kidnapping. We should have about three or four layers of security around the schools by now. The school authorities should have their own security network. All right. So um, CCTV camera all over the place. The soldiers should have the time in which schools are located to have their own security. All right. Well, thank you very I much. I know we should also. Uh, know, thank you very so much. If we have these layers of security, you know, all these uh, kidnapping of school children will be reduced. All right. But we need to wrap up here. Thank you very much for your time this Monday morning. Thanks for yes, speaking indeed. with us. Thank you. Uh, always very interesting Thanks hearing for having me. All right. Thanks uh, for having me. Yes. And of course, uh, Nigeria generally needs to be safer. Layers of security around universities is not normal. Um, having the Air Force and the Army and the police and then NC, NSCDC guarding, you know, um, education, uh, educational um, uh, structures is not normal. But that's what we need in uh, this time. It's still not really. normal. You know, I don't think we, I think Nigeria needs to be safe, you know, safe enough for people to go to school and go back but home. Desperate safe times enough for Nigerians to go out and come back. Yeah. <laughs>
It's I mean, not, if those soldiers were there normal, when, yeah. you know, those uh, insurgents struck at the Federal College of First Recognition. The soldiers were the there story, when their barracks were attacked. The story or when, have... when their base was attacked. They oh were my. there. They were armed. So right. it's not, that's not normal. I don't think we should, I don't think we should allow our, our, our country to get there where we now need to have layers of security guarding universities. It's, it's definitely not normal. I wouldn't send my child to school in a place like that that is guarded by, you know, security forces. Mm. Hell no. Even um, though others would claim that would make them safer, but yes. I, I get your point. Well, so, yes. I, I also saw a video um, over the weekend of someone who was talking about dogs. Um, I think I shared that video on our platform, um, that they need to get dogs to guard uh, schools in the north. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into talking uh, off the press. No, actually, today in history, and the events that took place 26th of April, many, many years ago here on The Breakfast. <laughs> 